Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Trespasser. In the last episode, we met with the Orlesian and Tavinta ambassadors. We have only to speak with the Ferelden ambassador, and he is right over there, Arl Tegan. He's back! After all this time, he is back, and they have done him so dirty. So unspeakably dirty. Divine Victoria, am I interrupting? Of course not, Inquisitor. I was catching up with Redcliffe's Arl. He's here to represent Ferelden at the summit. Inquisitor, good to meet you. How is Redcliffe doing, my lord? How are things in Redcliffe, my lord? Blessedly quiet. The mayor conveys his greetings. Redcliffe remembers its saviour. Oh, I... Literally, this is Mayor Gregory Dedrick's model from Crestwood. And they've just changed up his eyes and uh, the colour of his eyebrows. And they've given him this outfit. I really don't understand why they couldn't create a model for Tegan. I re like, was it a case of that they were just so rushed? That they were like, eh, Dedrick looks vague, vaguely like him and we can we can give him a hat and no one will notice. I just, was it that? Were they just being lazy? Like, I, it, it, to my mind, it wouldn't take them that long. Surely they've got plenty of models to work from. Why couldn't they have created something specific for Tegan? They created something specific for Bran. It doesn't look anything like how he used to look in a... Uh, Dragon Age 2, but they created something for him. Why did Tegan get shafted? I, I really don't understand that. I'll try not to keep you from more important matters. Very well. We'll continue this later, your perfection. Many are frightened of the Inquisition's power, but I will do all I can to allay their fears. Yeah, is, is there anything I can help with? Is there anything I can do to make your job easier? Explore the grounds. Let yourself be seen. The delegates need to put a face to the legend. I have much to do, but let me say this. I may no longer be your spy master, but I am always here if you require. I'm glad you finally arrived, Inquisitor. The Crown's anxious for news. And your thoughts on Ferelden's position? The breach is long gone, yet Skyhold's army remains. Ferelden can't continue to ignore soldiers on its borders. I understand the fear. It's necessary. At least you're open about... Again, I don't think Einor is in any mental state to be playing politics. I think that's ultimately where, you know, her advisors have gone wrong. She's just had this terrible news about her grandfather and it has completely wrecked her. And now they're expecting her to put on this this fake smile and play the game and play at being a politician. And she simply can't. She doesn't have the energy for it. I appreciate knowing where Ferelden stands. You are owed that, Inquisitor, especially here. These Orlesians will talk circles around you before you get a simple greeting out. I won't keep you longer. We'll have words enough when the Exalted Council begins. Indeed we will, Tegan. Indeed we will. Oh. Anekerch Halfa, a diverse catalogue of treasures, billing itself as the most distinguished retailer of fine goods and novelties to the rich since 786 Storm, this booklet is filled with woodcuts of strange trinkets the world's best articulated Everite back scratcher, complicated looking devices, the only triple decker carriage with Orzammar designed wheel locks for smoother braking, and specialty items. Be the first to enjoy the amazing cooling properties of Drake skin lining in one's evening mask. Flipping it. I, okay. A dispatch from the crown of Ferelden. Honored Arl Tegan. Let any who read this letter know you speak for the kingdom of Ferelden. Your words stand as my own, and your decisions are made with the support of myself and those pledged to the crown. You have been a loyal friend, and we invest in your tr in your 
Oh, and we invest in you our trust and goodwill. Make her be with you, Queen Honora of Ferelden. I do apologise once again for the tongue fumbles. It's getting really hot in the back room and I'm just like, why? Please, no, I can't handle this. Okie dokie, you, you do you, Tegan. Thank you for being honest, at the very least. Now then, I do believe that opens up dialogues. And again, I'm, I'm just being cautious. I'm not, I'm not going to get startled by that bloody harlequin. I'm determined. It's Dorian, hello there. As the most eloquent dwarf you know, Sparkles... Speech! Speech! Way too much speech. Varric, there's really no need. What's going on? Inquisitor! You're just in time. Sparkles, the Imperium doesn't deserve you. Or wants you. It, it may even kill you. But we'll miss you. If it counts. And you didn't know. Okay, folks. Time to take the party elsewhere. <laughs> Tommen never wanted any. <laughs> I swear. Uh, leave him. It's true. When the Exalted Council has ended, I'm going back to Tabinta. For good, this time. I understand. Why didn't you tell me? I see I'll miss you. Oh. It's between these. Again, everyone's leaving. Everyone is leaving and she is going to be left at Skyhold, trapped. Dorian has always shown that he's cared about her. Like, he's asked her routinely throughout the game how she's doing, so I don't think she'd explode on him. You know I'll miss you. Naturally. My father is dead. Assassinated, I believe. I received notice this morning a perversely cheerful letter congratulating me on assuming his seat in the Magisterium. We only met a few times while I was home. He didn't say anything about keeping me as his heir. This ambassadorship, his doing, I'm told. He must have wanted me away when the trouble began. I have to go back. Oh. Oh, yeah, considering Aynor's grandfather just died. You know, I, I think she'd have a lot of empathy for Dorian right here. You know, she's going to show him the empathy that no one has shown her. So you'll truly be a Magister? Oh, yes. I can't wait to degrade the Magisterium with my presence. A new outfit is required. And then what? I find my father's killers and kill them back. Then I find those giving to Vinter a bad name and kill them. They're most likely the same people, so that should make the job easier. Fair. Do you need any help? You'll need help. I could go with you. Not this time, my friend. I won't be entirely without support. Mayveris has gathered other Magisters who feel as we do. We'll be an actual faction in the Magisterium. I'll teach them manners, take them shopping. It'll be fun. <laughs> I know it was complicated, but... I'm sorry about your father. Thank you. It still doesn't feel real. Hmm. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing to say. I wish you well. Ooh. Aino has done this before, too. She's given people advice that she wishes people would give her. 
if he doesn't want to be a magister, then he doesn't have to do it. However, here's the thing. From the way he's talking, it kind of sounds like he does want it. You know, saying like, oh, we'll be an actual faction. Like, I'll teach them manners, take them shopping. It'll be fun. Like, he's making these plans. So it doesn't necessarily sound like he doesn't want this. It's more so that he didn't want his dad to die for him to get this position. Yeah, c considering he sounds like this is something he wants, I don't think she'd be trying to talk him out of it. She's sad that he's going, but she's not gonna kind of grip him and be like, please stay with me. She feels like she is contained. She doesn't want to make other people feel like that. So she's she's just gonna wish him well and, you know, hope for the best. Let him know that he that she's always here if he needs her. I wish you safe travels and the best of luck. Oh, I'll need it, thank you. Magisters are tricksy bastards. A present. A going away present. It's a sending crystal. Amazing what friendship with the Inquisition gives you access to. If I get in over my head, or you're overwhelmed with sorrow for lack of my velvety voice... Magic. What? You didn't think I would just leave and you'd never hear from me again, did you? You are my dearest friend. Perhaps my only friend. That will never change, no matter where we are. Now let's finish the good wine before the others get back. Oh, buddy. Buddy. <laughs> oh, that. My heart. My heart. It breaks. Also, you gave Ionor an iPhone. Yes. That's lovely. Thank you, she'll appreciate it. Oh, Dorian. Dorian, you're one of my favourites. Speaking of favourites... Liliana. Will you walk with me? The first time I came to the Winter Palace, I was only 18. I was dazzled. Such rich hangings, splendid marble columns, more golden lions than I could count. It's all still here, still bright, but I no longer see that same palace. Mm. Yeah, you, you sound saddened by that. And that makes you sad. It is easier on the heart to just see gilding. Now all I see are hands rubbed raw to make gold gleam, tears shed in the night over silk embroidery. Others overlook them and forget their pain, but I am divine and I cannot be blind. They seek to tear the Inquisition down. You feel it, no? Fear. Hmm. But we have so many friends, we know too much they should be afraid. Ooh. <laughs> they do have plenty of allies and they've done so much because here's the thing when when all is said and done it's not gonna be Colin and Josie taking the brunt of the argument it's going to be iron ore She's the figurehead. She's the one everyone is going to direct their grievances towards. And all throughout Inquisition, she was thinking like, oh, when it's all said and done and everyone's safe and everyone's happy, that'll, that's what is going to make all of this worth it. And she, she didn't necessarily expect everyone to turn around and be like, thank you, blessed Ionor, we kiss your feet and everyone does a round of applause. Like, she, she didn't expect that, but she did expect to be treated kindly, to be treated fairly. So I, I actually can see her saying something like this. Have we not made enough allies? If friends were easily made and kept... We wouldn't need diplomacy. 
Our allies can be cordial to our faces and still dread the future. They are afraid of nothing so much as the hand that directs it all. Mine. Already your actions have begun to reshape Thedas. Your influence is felt everywhere. It was only a matter of time before they moved. I'm surprised it took this long. The Inquisition's time is coming to an end. Oh. See, here's the thing. Einor, on a personal level, Einor agrees. She thought this two years ago, but she's been bashed down so many times. Colin is pushing for it to remain. Josie is just being a diplomat and being like, oh, I'm doing what's, you know, best for the Inquisition. And right now that's keeping it going. So, like, I'm going to push for that. Like, I think this is the first time someone said to her, like, one of her advisors has said to her, maybe it should end. So, yeah, I, I think she'd be asking, is that an order? Is that the decree of her perfection, Divine Victoria, that the Inquisition be dissolved? As Divine, it is my duty to think of Thedas and all her peoples. We set out to restore peace, and now peace is upon us. You and I have come so far through the darkness together, it is time for us both to live in the light. But whatever you decide, I will be honored to stand beside you. I love that. I absolutely love that. Like Liliana actively looking out for Einor's best interests right there in ways that Colin and Josie aren't. And I just... Oh, Liliana, thank you. Liliana, thank you for that. I'd be right here if you need anything. Now, I believe... I believe if she isn't divine, she actually has other stuff to say about her nug breeding program. But I could be mistaken on that. Um, you know what, actually, let me, let me just check if Dorian has anything else to say. I just kind of ran off from him. Dorian, buddy? Is you okay? Quite the party, wasn't it? I hear it left the Orlesians and Ferelden's completely aghast. Andraste's herald, the Inquisitor, toasting it to Vinter Magister. Not a bad scandal to leave on. Oh, no it isn't. I can't believe it's been so long. Around two years. That's it? Two years? Sweet merciful maker, it felt like ten. That could have been all the wine. Only thing back home I really missed. Good to see you, my friend. Okay, there we go. Oh, and it is good to see you too, Dorian. It is always good to see you. Now then, a demonic doggo, we have gifts for you. And... Whoop. And whoop. There, we, there can't be many more of them left. Hmm. Better be on the lookout. Now then, that, I do believe, is everyone spoken to over there. Colin, Dorian. Yep, okay, that's everyone. So now, now the other side. Hello there, Meriden. You doing okay, chicken? Okay, that's Charter, okay. Okay, I'm not about to be jump scared. Chapter 12. Yeah, so I did actually look. I'm missing, I think, about four chapters of Hard in Hightown. I might be able to track them all down here, though. So that, that'd that be good. Oi! And that is why I've been keeping an eye out. Thank you for the money. Fashionably late. I thought you weren't going to show. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I would have sent word ahead. I gave you my word we would talk, and I never break my word. 
Easy there. I was just teasing. So tell me everything that happened while I was away. And after the betrayal, and what I put those men through, my sorries were worth about as much as shit. So yeah, he's been going around finding all of the, uh, all of the survivors from his platoon that he betrayed, and he's been trying to make amends. That's good. That is very good. Are you glad you at least tried to apologize? It's hard to say. I go back and forth most days. They needed to know that there's a way to come back from anything. And I wanted to help them if I could. I thought going up there on the gallows was difficult. This was worse. A hundred times worse. Anyway, it's nice to be back. Though I'm not sure what to think of this council. No matter what, you know you can always count on my sword arm and my friendship. <laughs> yeah, um, no, j j j maybe, maybe you should stop destroying things, Blackpool. I'm getting a little worried for the palace, and any passerby. <laughs> oh, buddy. Buddy. Inquisitor. You're right. Inquisitor. I... This is another person that I'm like, I, I seem to remember you saying something about Solus. Because I remember there's an option to be like, that son of a bitch. And he's like, okay, you're still not over it. All right, darling. Okay. And maybe it happens later. Blackwall and the last few years. Inquisitor, I hope this letter finds you well. I apologize for my prolonged absence. I have traced the whereabouts of one more of my former company, and I am writing to you from Kirkwall, where he now resides. I knew him as Private Nicholas Laurie. He goes by Klaus now. Unlike so many of the men I betrayed, Klaus found a way to put his life together without turning to crime. It doesn't in any way lessen the horror of what I did, but it was comforting to see at least one life not completely ruined by my actions. Klaus is married to a lovely lady, they run a small bakery. It didn't take him long for recognition to dawn, and then I had two mince pies lobbed at my head. Pies that were fresh from the oven, mind you. It was a good thing I ducked. I made my apologies. Even after months of searching and making reparations, it was still hard. To his credit, Klaus allowed me to talk, and we ended the visit with ales at the hanged man. I should return within the month. Thank you for allowing me this time, Inquisitor. Yours, Tom Rainier. Oh, that's, that's good. That he's, he's trying to make amends. That is, that is exactly what Aino wanted for him. Recruiting the brave to join the cause. I ran both loyal and indulgent one. A past brilliant agent of the <laughs> Why would you do this? Okay, that, that is very lovely, Meriden. However, I, I do have things to do. Okay, ooh. Oh, oh, right there. Yoink. Plenty of options to buy and sell. Hmm. Yeah, let's... Oh my god, we can, we can just straight up buy Dragon Bone. No, no, thank you. I'm happy with what everyone has. Hmm. Oh yeah, I am. I am not selling that. Thank you. Oh my God, she has the flower crown. I love it. That is absolutely an appropriate thing to be wearing to the exalted council. Yes, I know. Work, girl. Part of me. Inquisitor, I see you have time for afternoon refreshments. Glimmering, glittering, perfect cut, mask, a maze of gemstones. She will think it pretty. Excuse me, I might, um... Eh, hey. yeah, thanks for that, Cole. I appreciate the help getting him elsewhere. He wants stones the color of his eyes. Happy, bright, beaming, being seen, not seeing. And I needed the table. 
For breadcrumbs? Birds like breadcrumbs. Inquisitor, how good to see you here. I came to sit and pen another song. Sweet songs, poignant pain plants joy that grows later. She can't see me. I help her help people. I gathered. You're smart and kind. You're worthy of true love. Hello, Halam Shiraz! The fire of Zither must be fueled by wine, ideally shared with adoring fans. But not with him. You need somebody nice. <laughs> yes, better. He'll be gentle. So will you. You're with the Chargers, are you not? I've seen you in the Skyhold Tavern where I sing. Oh, yes. I, I love your songs. Sometimes I'd sit up on the chair to take a better look at your songs. The Chargers have their own song, if you'd like to hear it. Good. Oh, <laughs> That's lovely! <laughs> also, just the fact that <laughs> they referenced Krem standing up on his chair, it's a bit of a... It's not exactly a bug or a glitch, but it's something that he'll do. Instead of sitting, he'll stand up on the chair and kind of look over. So I, I love, I love that they included that as a reference. Um, here's the thing, the, uh, Creme, uh, Creme is trans. Not everyone is accepting of that. Not everyone wants to date someone if they were not born as the gender they're presenting. Now, here's the thing, it's highly doubtful that Cole would you know, hook something like that up, you know, where he knows that Krem will be hurt, but still, it... I do think Ainor would be worrying about that. Ainor likes Krem and the Chargers. You sure they'll both be all right when Krem tells her? Strong arms, a sweet voice. Father wanted me to be happy. Which one of them is that? <laughs> both. And there it is, Meriden is also trans. So if she didn't accept Krem, she'd be a massive fucking hypocrite. <laughs> no, Cole. Cole, I, I want to speak more to you. Cole, let me in. Oh my, is that an invisible wall? It is. Okay, I'll go through the door then. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, but... Hello. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Alrighty then, that seems a little odd. The Gilded Horns drink menu. The Golden Nug. An effervescent white Selene wine with a dash of West Hill brandy, brandy, brandy and a splash of pomegranate juice. Muddled with raspberries and a sprig of royal elf fruit. The Hissing Drake. A bold mix of cinnamon-infused whiskey, dark Lamerin rum, and Hirol's lava burst. Not for the faint of stomach or heart. Benediction. Prophet's laurel gin served with a wedge of lime and a thimble of golden scythe. The Emerald Valley. Made with a spirit dispil distilled by Chantry sisters in leads from other 70 herbs and flowers. Topped by egg white foam dusted with nutmeg. A Night of Shame, our sweetest Antivan port with a dash of chocolate bitters and a twist of orange, served in a flute of chilled cerul glass. The Randy Dowager, rumoured to have been concocted by the editor of Olay's most scandalous periodical herself, a tall glass of abyssal peach liquor and fresh cream, garnished with sugared rose petals and served on a silk handkerchief with a scandalous rhyming couplet inked on it by the bartender. Very cool. And with that, I am going to bring this episode to a close. In the next one, we speak with Sarah and Bull. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.